Greer and welcome. My name is Amarinske and today I come to you with my first original book tag called the Around the World Through Time book tag, which is a tag about history, mythology and all kinds of different things. And we go around the world to bring around some diversity. The first question of this tag is Scandinavia, Northern Europe and Russia. In my case, this is a favorite historical fiction or fantasy taking place in or based on Scandinavian or Russian mythology or folklore or history. And for this, I'll choose the Witches of East End trilogy consisting of the Witches of East End, The Serpent's Kiss and The Winds of Salem by Melissa de la Cruz because this was one of my favorite witch series I read last year. I really, really loved it and I love the way it integrates Norwegian and Scandinavian mythology in a, an almost magical realism sense. It, it is on the border between low fantasy and magical realism, which I really, really liked. And just the way romance is embedded in the story and the fact that these books are a little bit more adult than regular fantasy books I see going around on a lot of booktube channels that and I discovered them before I joined booktube I have already recommended them to more than one person and I hope they will be loved now we go on to the second question which is a uh, Europe talk about a book or recommend one of your favorite retellings or fantasies with roots in or based on European mythology, folklore or history and be sure to specify the country it is based on because a lot of countries have different kinds of mythology and things that are specific for that area. So I will talk about my favorite fantasy book series based on Celtic mythology. I believe it's Welsh and it's the Ballad of Sir Benfro, which I've already reviewed and talked about more on this channel. This is one of my all time favorite fantasy series with all the complex political intrigue and the different ways the magic system can work and all the rules and things that are not only told but also shown very well s several times in the story throughout the five books. And the more you get towards the ending, the more action-packed it gets. This book in particular, which is the last part in the series, also was had one of the most satisfying fantasy endings I have ever come across. So I definitely recommend you read it. Now I will go on with the next question, which is Middle East. Take a retelling or a fantasy with roots in or based on an Arabian country's culture or fairy tales or it is taking place in one of those countries or it has a Muslim main character. I choose the Stromkönige trilogy by Kai Meyer, which is based on 1001 Arabian Nights stories and takes place in the vicinity of Baghdad. Well, this book specifically is about traveling to Baghdad through a desolate area taken over by genies that are fighting with storm kings. Now it's time for question four, which is Sub-Saharan Africa. Take any book that takes place in Sub-Saharan Africa and I choose Darwin's Hofeife by T uh, Thomas Goldsmith. This is a scientific book about the Darwin's theory of evolution and someone who has almost seen it in real life which is really interesting, but it also has a fictional component that talks about the cultures living around Lake Victoria, which is where this book takes place. It talks a little bit about how those people live and how they deal with other people and stuff. This book has been translated into English and it is uh, called Darwin's Dream Pond in English. I still want to reread it. I read this book about four or five years ago. I really liked it right then and I am trying to reread this this year and I hope I will still really really like it as much as I did back then. Now I will be talking about a book, Southeast Asia, that is Max Havelaar by Multatuli, which is also a Dutch literary fiction book, which has been, and it takes place I believe in uh, at Java, and this writer is criticizing the way the Dutch people uh, deal with and treat the local people he also does that by interviewing and talking with the local people because he has been a resident around there, he has been in residency. So he has seen a lot of it and he did not really agree with it, so he wrote a societal critic. This book has been translated into English as well as German and French and a lot of different other languages and I believe it's just called Max Havelaar then as well because that's the name of the main character in this book. Now I get Australia. 
Take a contemporary book or an historical fiction that takes place in Australia and I am going to talk about a book I don't physically own anymore. I gave it to my dad because I think it might have a better home in his home library instead of mine because I did not at all like the writing style which I hope I will find out how to overlay in my editor because I have no clue how to but the book is called Zuiderkruis by Pauline Slot and it is about a, it has a good premise it is about a, a woman who just disappeared and they think she is dead but they don't know because they never found her body um, and she died on a cycling uh, trip around Australia her best friend is going to redo this uh, trip so she can discover what the act happened and during this trip she is talking a lot of people who met her friend as well and that would not have been a problem just as for example it would not have been a problem that there is a lot of flashbacks from a lot of characters in there were it not that a lot of flashbacks give the feeling that they stop midway through i will now go on with the next question which is about latin america choose or recommend a book written by a latin american author or taking place in latin america i have a book of paulo coelho called the winner stands alone which does not will take place in latin america but i believe paulo coelho is an argentinian writer so yeah i like the book and the way it is written i think it takes place over one day and you follow the perspectives of about three or four characters who all in some way turn out to be involved in the death or murder of a person they did not actually do it or think about it but they get involved with it when it happens or just before or after it happened I'll let you think about that the people in the top or the people on top of society are usually alone and it is really written well into the book because they don't have time for friendships and family and relationships so they are usually alone and now the final question which is about Northern America and it is about a historical fiction taking place in the Northern Americas and I have for this the recommendation if you have not read it already of Dances with Wolves which is one of the favorite books I read for English literature and language in high school and I still want to reread it but it was one of my favorite reads it's so intense it is so emotional about a soldier who goes to the frontier and discovers that he actually feels a link with the Native Americans and decides to live with them. Then another group of American people come and they don't know that he is not a Native American. I don't know how much is true of this book, but I found the historical fiction aspect of this really enjoyable. And it, I find it to be a shame that I never actually watched the movie. But I recommended it to several people in my class and they all liked the book. So even the people that were not much into English book reading, when I recommended this, they usually liked it. Which I liked because that is positive for me. They trusted my recommendations a lot. I will post the questions in the description below. And now I tag everybody who wants to do this tag. And in particular Ariel Bissett who I heard say that she never gets tagged in any tag video. So Ariel Bissett, you have been tagged. And I hope to maybe see your video about this soon. This will be it for now. Thank you for watching and on the